Welcome to another session of uh, surfaces. Today we are going to study about some examples of uh, surfaces. Previous class we have seen the definition of surfaces as definition we have seen that whenever you are having a smooth function f from u to r and you are representing s as your f inverse of c where some c belongs to r this means that s can be represented as a level set of some uh, smooth function and further condition is that del f of p is not equal to 0 for every p belongs to s so this was the definition of surfaces so today we are having uh, some examples of surfaces example two examples we have already seen so let me name it as example 3 we have studied that graph of a function today we will prove that graph of a function is a uh, surface so let f from uh, u to r be a smooth function be a smooth function on u smooth function on u comma u open u open in r then the graph of f then the graph of f Uh, graph of f uh, we are having this equal to uh, graph of f is equal to what was that set of all x1 x2 x3 extra x and plus 1 belongs to r and plus 1 such that x n plus 1 is equal to f of x1 x2 extra x n so this was our definition of graph of this function now how, how we can express this as a in terms of level sets the surface question right so is an n surface is an n surface in r n plus 1 in r n plus 1 since graph of f can be represented as some g inverse of 0 where our g is defined as g of x1 x2 extra x n plus 1 is equal to x n plus 1 minus f of x1 x2 extra xn so when you are representing a function g as g of x1 x2 etc xn plus 1 equal to xn plus 1 minus of f of x1 x2 extra xn then uh, this will represent as a level set s can be represented as a level set or graph of g can be represented as a level set now we want to check uh, whether del g of x1, x2, x3, x3, xn plus 1 is non-zero. Also, also uh, when you are finding del uh, g of x1, x2, x3, xn plus 1, evidently you will get this to be uh, non-zero. What is the reason? Because this is equal to, I am finding this in x1, x2, x3, xn plus 1. Next term is? This will become del f by del x1, right? Del f by del x2 up to del f by uh, del xn. This much of term we don't know what is the condition. Next term is del uh, del g of uh, del xn plus 1. So that will result 1. Since you are having xn plus 1 term, so that is uh, 1. 
Now this quantity is never equal to 0. So this implies that is graph of F is a N surface. So this is a one example. Graph of a function is a N surface. Next is example 4. Example 4. Let S be an N minus 1 surface in Rn. Let S be an uh, N minus 1 surface not N A B A N minus 1 surface in Rn given by S equal to F inverse of C S equal to F inverse of C where F from uh, U to R F from U to R comma U open in Rn is such that is such that del f of p not equal to 0 for all p belongs to f inverse of c. So this is nothing but uh, it's saying that this is n minus 1 surface, right? Nothing else. Let g uh, be defined from u1 to r g is defined from u1 to r where u1 is equal to u cross r u1 is equal to u cross r now this is nothing but set of all uh, x1 x2 x xn plus 1 belongs to rn plus 1 because u means is a subset of uh, Rn. See, U is a subset of Rn. So, U cross R means it's a subset of Rn plus 1. Rn plus 1 such that such that x1, x2, x3, xn belongs to U. Right? So, this is the set U cross R. Be defined by be defined by we are defining this G, right? It's defined by uh, G of X1, X2, etc. G of X1, X2, X2, Xn plus 1 is equal to X1, X2, X2, Xn plus 1, comma, dou F by dou X1, partial derivative of F with respect to X1. A partial derivative of f with respect to x2, x3. Last name, partial derivative of f with respect to xn. And next term is 0. So when you are defining like this, oh, sorry, made a mistake here. Uh, instead of finding uh, this point okay uh, what we are having here is not this one we are defining g of x1, x2, etc, xn plus 1, right? This we are defining as uh, f of x1, x2, etc, xn. Previously, uh, without mentioning you what is g, I have found what is del f of g. That's the problem here. So, uh, g of x1, x2, etc, xn plus 1 equal to f of x1, x2, etc, xn. Now, uh, del g of x1, 
x2 x star xn plus 1 that's equal to x1 x2 x star xn plus 1 comma dou f by dou x1 uh, dou f by dou x2 extra dou x n by dou x n comma next time dou f by dou x n plus 1 will come but there is no term containing uh, x n plus 1 so this term should be 0 right and uh, we have given that this f is an surface so this dou f by dou x1 dou f by dou x2 etc cannot be equal to 0 and dou f by dou x1 dou f by dou x2 x term dou f by dou x and is not equal to 0 or cannot be simultaneously equal to 0 well, that's better cannot be simultaneously zero since what is the reason since f from uh, s equal to f inverse of c is a surface right is a surface So, what you can conclude? When g of when g of x1, x2, extra xn plus 1 equal to f of x1, x2, extra xn that's equal to c del f of x1 x2 extra xn is not equal to 0 whenever whenever your x1 x2 extra xn belongs to f inverse of c that is the surface this so belongs to f inverse of c that's what you're getting is this then n surface g inverse of c is called the cylinder called the cylinder over s it's called the cylinder over s the cylinder the cylinder g inverse of 0 sorry g inverse of 1 over the n sphere that means uh, f is going to be equation of sphere uh, g of x1 x2 extra x n plus 2 equal to what is that f of x1 x2 etc x n plus 1 will come right so that is nothing but x1 square plus x2 square plus extra plus xn square right sorry xn plus 1 square because you have taken xn plus 2 so xn plus 1 square this is the equation of n plus 1 sphere right now uh, this will represent n plus 1 sphere now this will reduce as my g of xn plus 2 so x n plus 2 can vary right so when you are drawing this means it should be uh, suppose I am taking n equal to 0 n equal to 0 means I am having axis x and y axis now g inverse of 1 when you are finding it should be two straight lines right become as two straight lines what was the straight lines n equal to 0 and uh, n equal to 0 means it will come up to x1 only one term will come right so x equal to 
1 and x equal to minus 1 will come. So, x equal to minus 1 means somewhere here one line will come. And x equal to 1 somewhere here. Right? So, these are the two lines. Now, this is my, these two lines will represent these two lines will represent my g inverse of 1. Right? So, it is called a zero sphere. It is called a zero sphere in R1. It is called a zero sphere in R1. So, let us see what will happen uh, if n equal to 1. So, second case, when n equal to 1, I will have the drawing in the, the 3D form, right? So, graph means it will lie in the uh, 3D plane. So, here the equation will become x1 square plus x2 square. That is nothing but a circus, right? So, I will have something like this. Okay, so here also the cross section should be circles. So when n equal to 1, it will give exactly our cylinder, right? So this is the thing g inverse of 1 here, right? So 1 sphere is called a 1 sphere, or we will say that the unit circle in R2 in R2. So, this is why we are saying such a form as a cylinder. So, here we are defining G as G of x1, x2, x3, etc. xn plus 1 equal to f of x1, x2, x3, etc. xn. So, in this form it is called a cylinder. Now, we are having one more example. Example 5 let C be a curve in R2. Be a curve in R2. Which lies above the x1 axis. Which lies above the x1 axis. Thus, we can write c equal to some f inverse of c for some u in r sorry uh, for some f from u to r with del f of p not equal to 0 for all P belongs to C. Where U is contained in the upper half plane. Where U is contained in the upper half plane. Upper half plane means we can represent that as x2 is greater than a 0. Now define define uh, s equal to g inverse of c. s equal to g inverse of c where g is uh, defined from u cross r to r by g of x1, x2, x3 uh, uh, we can take it as in a particular form we can take it uh, only it is containing uh, r3 so no need of 
taking such as general things so let me take this as x1 x2 x3 x1 x2 x3 equal to f of x1 comma x2 square plus x3 square whole thing raised to 1 by 2 right so this is my new function g of x1 x2 x3 equal to f of x1 comma x2 square plus x3 square all thing raised to 1 by 2 then s is a two surface then this s is a two surface let us see how we can mention it here uh, we have already mentioned s as g inverse of c so this will represent a level set so next thing we want to check is del g of x1 x2 x3 not equal to 0 or not right since uh, s c equal to g inverse of c and uh, what should be del uh, f of sorry del g of del g of x1 x2 x3 that's equal to x1 x2 x3 comma what will come first first one f of x1 x2 x3 right so it will become del f f by del x1 okay next thing del f by del x2 and derivative of this will come right so uh, it will become derivative of this will come okay so 1 by 2 into x2 square plus x3 square all thing raised to 1 by 2 minus 1 into again x2 derivative that is 2x2 will come right next term dou f by dou x3 into 1 by 2 into x2 square plus x3 square all thing raised to 1 by 2 minus 1 into 2x3 will come right so this this will be the derivative now this quantity cannot be equal to 0 what is the reason since we have seen that this f will represent see uh, this f is representing a surface right then f of p not equal to 0 for p belongs to c so this also true for all simultaneously these terms cannot be simultaneously these terms cannot be equal to zeros so this quantity cannot be equal to 0 for every p belongs to g inverse of c so it is a two surface so it is a two surface generally this surface is called the surface of revolution obtained by rotating the curve c about the x1 axis so each point each point P equal to A B belongs to uh, C generate generate a circle of points circle of points S namely namely the circle in the plane the circle in the plane x1 equal to a consisting of those points consisting of those points x1 x2 x3 belongs to r3 
such that such that your x1 should be equal to a and x2 square plus x3 square right is equal to some b square now s is called the surface is called the surface of revolution of revolution obtained by rotating the curve rotating the curve C about the x1 axis about the x1 axis so how it will become means suppose we are having uh, something like a curve like this okay some curve like this and uh, if you are rotating this suppose our x is something like this okay suppose uh, my surface is like this now if you are rotating this means each point i am i have got a circle right so each point i will have a circle means may come something like this right so i will get a something like a surface like this okay so when you are having x y axis and i have got uh, something like this a curve means suppose this my curve now if i am rotating this means i will get exactly something like this right so here i will get a circle like this and here too i will have a circle like this now each point i have got a circle so this one is called the surface of revolution so today we have seen only three example one is going to be graph of a function so we have proved that graph of a function is a uh, n surface so graph of a function is an n surface second thing we have seen that uh, cylinder and the third one we have seen the surface of revolution so i'm uh, stopping here for today's class thank you for your patient listening thank you